What's going on, Falcons fans? It is time to go over your mailbag questions that you have sent to me. And I wanted to say thank you for not even just sending me mailbag questions, but we just started bringing these back. It's been like three or two, somewhere around there, three to two years uh, since we last answered mailbag questions on this channel. And a lot more came in than I thought there was going to be. Like, I thought there was just going to be like four or five or something, but there were a lot of questions. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. And I know I already said this in my last, well, not my last video. It was the video announcing that mailbag questions are coming back. But I'll explain it real quickly. Um, I'm only bringing these mailbag questions back because I want to find a way to impact the world in a very positive way and impact you all in a positive way. And I do feel like that mailbag questions, when we were doing these three or two years ago, um, it was something that you guys really liked seeing and you all loved hearing my answers on your questions and a lot of questions would come in and now we are back and I just, I wanna make sure that I'm doing something that positively impacts you guys and this world. Uh, so uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. This is just the start of bringing back what will be an awesome journey of mailbag questions. Now, uh, the last thing I will say before we get started, um, for this video alone, it's okay, but in, you know, for the future, just a future reference, I only want mailbag questions to be only on the community tab. Every Thursday, I will ask for mailbag questions and you guys can ask whatever you want, but I would only like the mailbag questions to be on that community tab because I just kind of like when questions are a little organized and I find them in one spot. Um, and I, I'm only accepting mailbag questions that you guys asked in the announcement video for mailbag questions and also in the latest video of Rise Up Rundown that I made yesterday. Um, because, you know, we're, we're just getting started. Um, but just, you know, future reference, I would like to only have those in the community tab, please. Um, but anyway, um, we're going to have a lot of fun and let's get started. All right, so the first one is Zachary Stone, 2156. What do you think is our biggest need this offseason in the draft or free agency? All right, so I know I already made a video going over, you know, the Falcons' biggest needs, but I do think that, you know, this should also be addressed that I wish I addressed in the video, is even though I think pass rush is our biggest need right now, like literally, like no question about it, um, I also know that anything can change. Um, maybe the Falcons actually do, now that they have Ryan Nielsen as their defensive coordinator. I do wonder with all that money that they have, is it like 56 million in cap or 70 million in cap? They always like switch it around nowadays, but um, a message on my computer. Um, but um, I do kind of wonder if Ryan Nielsen's gonna find some really good pass rushers in free agency. And then, you know, when we address that, then what would our biggest need be in the draft? probably another offensive weapon for Arthur Smith. I wouldn't really be surprised. Um, so, you know, if pass rush is our biggest need and it does get addressed in free agency, then I guess the biggest need heading into the draft would probably be wide receiver. Um, but, you know, maybe we could get a free agent wide receiver, like a big time wide receiver, like, Oh, uh, what's his name? I was like just talking about it on Twitter. Oh, he's from the Chargers, Keenan Allen. Like, you know, if we got him to like a one or two year deal, um, I wouldn't really say our wet receiver position is like fixed all of a sudden, but it would give us a better reason to go for a pass rusher in the first round of the draft. Either way, what I'm saying is like, pass rush I think should be our number one focus, and then wide receiver if pass rush actually does get addressed early on. User IG8B1MM6K asks, how much of an impact does the O-line take if we end up losing Caleb McGarry? And I love this question because think about um, how much the tables have turned with this. Um, Caleb McGarry, in the start of the year, was just kind of a, well, if we lose him, it's no big deal. Because Caleb McGarry was not really proven. Like he just basically, I don't, I don't wanna say he didn't do anything for us, but like he just wasn't where we wanted him to be. But this year he took off, like in 2022 and a little bit of 2023, he was a monster. I mean, his run blocking especially was phenomenal. So now it kind of makes you wonder what's gonna happen if we lose Caleb McGarry? Was that just a fluke, like one year wonder for Caleb McGarry or is that actually the Caleb McGarry we're gonna get? 
Because I do also think that not getting a fifth-year option was kind of what motivated him. Because he's like, well, I'm a first-round pick. i got to get that fifth-year option. Um, so I think Caleb McGarry, if we, if we end up paying him, I wouldn't pay him that much yet. Um, I would maybe give him like a one, maybe two-year deal. Uh, because to be fair, it was only one like great year from Caleb McGarry. Uh, now, if we lose him, it, it kind of just depends on if Caleb McGarry actually is who we saw last year. Like, um, you know, if he is just the Caleb McGarry that we saw throughout the years, then I guess no big deal. Like, we could go get offensive line and get right tackle. But if he actually is that great player we saw last year, that definitely would be a loss. Um, and I wouldn't feel so confident that our run game would be as good. Yes, really. I actually am saying that if we lose one player on that apparent top five O-line from PFF, I don't know if our run blocking would be as great um, because Caleb McGarry was very good and he's still a young player. Um, I mean, you know, the run game would still be good, but I just don't think it would be as good as what I'm trying to say. Um, so, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think it necessarily, I think if you lose Caleb McGarry, I don't think it would like really, really, really hurt. It's not like, you know, if you lose like a, a, a quarterback and then all of a sudden it's like, oh crap, we need like a lot of changes in order to be a contender again. Uh, this is just kind of like, you know, the Chiefs losing Tyree Kill, kind of like that. Like, it's like, okay, like it does hurt obviously, but we have to find a way around this. But that's only if Caleb McGarry is the exact same player that we saw from last year. Xports 9639 asks, do you think that if the Falcons trade back in the first round and take Osiris Torres from Florida, who is the best guard in the draft, is a better option, or staying at their spot, taking Peter Skaronski and converting him to guard? All right, so I will kind of be honest. I haven't exactly gotten to the point where I figured out my favorite players in this draft are yet. Uh, but I also am listening to what other, other people say about them as just kind of like, I guess like some things to look for when looking at these guys and looking at their film and whatnot. Uh, but either way, I think that it would probably be smarter to just stay in our spot and get a freaking pass rusher in the first round that this team just for some reason refuses to do every single year. But um, offensive line is a need. We do need a left guard. And I don't know how I feel about Drew Dahman yet, but we could maybe use another center. But I do think that offensive line can be addressed later on in the draft or maybe free agency i don't know but um i don't think the offensive line is something we would go for in the first round again it's a need but i don't think it's what we would go for early on i think you would go get pass rush or i guess maybe the other position would be a wide receiver but that's really all it like that's all i can really think of rc plan builder 2005 asked will kyle pitts have a shot at becoming the ap 2023 comeback player of the year well, I have an unfortunate answer is we're the Atlanta Falcons and teams are, well, uh, the, the league is only going to care about us if we start winning games. Um, now, unless something like serious happens, which, I mean, you know, obviously, God forbid, we don't really want anything serious to happen to Kyle Pitts, but like, uh, if you know what I mean, like a serious injury or something. Um, but, you know, can he be comeback, comeback player of the year? Um, not only does the league not take us seriously because we're the Falcons and we have to get in the playoffs before they start looking at us. Uh, even though the talent is there, but it's, you know, it's sadly how it is. Like, I'm sure there were some great, like, Colts players, but no one talked about them because the team sucked, right? Um, so we have to get, you know, at least playoff good, unfortunately, unfortunately, to have any of our players or coaches be recommended for winning some sort of award. Um, but I also think it is unfortunately kind of a long shot in the first place because no one's seriously viewing Kyle Pitts as a bad player anyway. Like they're kind of just like Kyle Pitts had a down year, but he'll bounce back. Like that's kind of what everyone's thinking because they know how good Kyle Pitts is. So I guess overall my answer is like, probably not. I mean, that would be awesome if he did. Um, but you know, I, it, it's probably not, it, it's probably just not likely. Kale the Gamer 1426 asked, would you like this trade? Falcons get Lamar Jackson, Ravens get Desmond Ritter, two first round picks and three second round picks. Um, all right, so I, I would oh, like, okay, so I said this in my Lamar Jackson video, but I would understand the move to get Lamar Jackson, but I don't think I would like it per se. Like I would just kind of be like, okay, you know, I get it. I guess Desmond Ritter wasn't very good last year, but um, 
but I wouldn't really like it. I would kind of hope that we at least develop Desmond Ritter. Um, but, in, I mean, if we get Lamar Jackson, I would definitely be better if we kept Desmond Ritter than if we had to get rid of him. Because for one thing, like, you would hope that Desmond Ritter, if Lamar Jackson comes to this team, Desmond Ritter could at least, like, learn a thing or two from him. And no offense, but it would be a better mentor than Marcus Mariota. No offense, I promise. It's just, let's be honest, he would. Lamar Jackson would be a way, a way better mentor than Marcus Mariota. But it's also just like, um, you know, like, what, I, I just, I, I really would want Lamar, or uh, um, Desmond Ritter to develop with some players that we can get in free agency in the draft. Because I like Desmond Ritter a lot. I think he has potential, but he really did not look good last year. And I want to see what he looks like for a full year. Um, now, losing him and trading him to the Ravens. I mean, I guess the Ravens do need a quarterback if they can't keep Lamar Jackson. And John Harbaugh is a great coach. You know, maybe he can do a thing or two with Desmond Ritter. Um, so, you know, like, you know, I guess... It would be kind of a win-win for both teams if John Harbuck knows what he's doing and Lamar Jackson is the same Lamar Jackson we've seen. Um, but I just don't, I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't really make sense to just get rid of Desmond Ritter right away. Um, and I also just predict that Lamar Jackson is going to get paid by the Ravens. I, that is my prediction. I think ultimately he will end up in Baltimore. I don't think he's going to go to the Falcons. Um, and then what was it? Uh, two first round picks and three second round picks. The two first round picks, um, like, that's kind of a lot to give up. Like, this team does have a lot of needs, even though they did overachieve last year. The second round picks is also bad, but I wouldn't be, like, as mad without the first round. Like, I, I would worry more about the first round picks than the second round picks, obviously. But you still want those second round picks. In a way, I guess my answer is, like, I would understand the move to get Lamar Jackson. I just wouldn't really do it if I were the GM. And if it happens, I wouldn't like it, but I would understand it. All right, now we're gonna ask for some mailbag questions from this video. Cool Things 246 asks, what free agents should the Falcons consider going in on? Okay, I know I said this on Twitter. Go in on Keenan Allen. Yes, he's injury prone. And yes, he's a veteran, he's getting old. And he probably would be better for a team that's trying to win now. And the Falcons just aren't really in a win now situation. But like, wouldn't you wanna like, develop your quarterback more with like a legitimate like great veteran and also develop the players around him he can develop uh um drake london and maybe even kyle pitts like just it, i mean it's always nice to have a little bit of a veteran presence on your team right like you you want your team to be young but not like that young um this team is very very young there's barely any veterans and it would just be kind of nice if we had like a veteran to just kind of coach these guys up a little bit. Drake London and Kyle Pitts and Desmond Ritter. They're all very, very young. And also, it's not even just to coach these guys up, but also just like, why not just bring in an impactful receiver to help us win more games anyway? I think bringing in Keenan Allen is kind of a no-brainer. Now, what about Gerald Everett? I know I talked about him on Twitter too. I would actually be okay with Gerald Everett. It'd be kind of nice to have like another great tight end behind Kyle Pitts. Um... Because Arthur Smith does like utilizing tight ends. And Gerald Dever is a good one. And again, he's a veteran. He could coach up Kyle Pitt. So those are the two free agents I can think of right off the bat. Um, another one is Jesse Bates. That'd be a great player to get for us. Um, another, I know I keep saying this, but like another great player to coach up our team for all these young guys. Um, and... Well, that's, that's really all I can think about at the top of my head. I wouldn't really get Lamar Jackson, but I would understand it. Um, let, let's see. I, before I move on, I'm trying to think of any other free agents. Um, that's probably all I can think about for now. And that will become a video is what free agents should the Falcons consider picking up. Now, I don't know when that will be, but I do want to make that video. But those are the three players that I can think of at the top of my head. Jesse Bates and then uh, Gerald Everett and Keenan Allen, especially Keenan Allen. Like, I think that is a no brainer. And you don't have to sign him to like a multi year deal. You can have him like for one or two years, just a prove it deal. Because, yeah, he is injury prone, but just again, it's a, it's a prove it year. Terry Turner asks, What are your thoughts on QB Daniel Jones if the Giants don't keep him? His stats are better than Ryan Tannehill and he would be cheaper. He can compete against Desmond Ritter for the starting spot. Hashtag rise up. 
Um, that would also be interesting to pick up because uh, Daniel Jones is not a bad quarterback. I mean, you know, yeah, sure, like a lot of work was with Brian Dable and Saquon Barkley, but that's also not to say that Daniel Jones did nothing. He's really not a bad quarterback. Now, he is a pocket passing quarterback, and I do wonder if Arthur Smith would want to work with that again or if he wants to work with more mobile quarterbacks. I mean, Daniel Jones isn't, like, that immobile. Like, there was that one play versus the, well, was it the Eagles or the Commanders, where, like, on Thursday night, it looked like he was running all the way, and then he, like, tripped or something. So, like, you know, he's not, like, that immobile or anything, but mostly he's a pocket-passing quarterback, which is not, like, that big of a problem as long as you know, like, uh, as long as you build a great team around them and you know how to coach those guys up. But, um, you know, Daniel Jones... I think he's a great quarterback. You know, I think he's done some great things for the New York Giants. Uh, I don't think Danny Dimes is necessarily a bad nickname for him. I think he can drop some dimes here and there. Um, now, would he be the quarterback that I would want on my team? Uh, probably not. Like, it's not that Daniel Jones sucks, but I, I think I would probably rather stick with Desmond Ritter. Um, and I know that Daniel Jones could also coach up Desmond Ritter. Um, cause Daniel Jones is, I mean, he hasn't been in the league for like that long, but he's kind of getting there. Um, but at the same time, I don't think Daniel Jones has like the same traits as Desmond Ritter. Like, I don't know if he would be able to, you know, coach up mobile, uh, mobility and stuff. But I, I mean, I don't know, like I wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't like think it's like a bad move to get Daniel Jones, but I probably would not do it. Um, and I would probably just keep Desmond Ritter as the starter. Rayleg4481 asks, what do you think about the Falcons drafting a corner in round one and a wide receiver round two, all defense after that? Okay, so I'm probably underrating how big of a need corner is. Corner is actually a pretty big need. That is if Casey Hayward cannot stay healthy. And I like Casey Hayward a lot. I actually think he can still play. When he was healthy for two games, he actually was very good um, for us, or well, maybe he was only good for like one game, but, uh, either way, like I, I do like Casey Hayward, um, but relying on him to stay healthy at this point is just not very, I don't know, like, it's just not very, like, likely that that happens, unfortunately, and then we'd be stuck with a, a, a very, very big question mark at corner. And Isaiah Oliver is probably going to be back at slot corner. I know I kind of trash on Isaiah Oliver a lot, but I just, I don't know how much I trust him. Like, he's getting better. I will admit that. He's a physical corner, and his cover skills have been a lot better over the years. Um, but I, I don't know. Like, I don't know how much I trust him. So, like, um, it'd be kind of nice to maybe get, I mean, I know Casey Hayward was a veteran. I, I, okay, at this point, it's kind of like, you know, I keep mentioning the whole, you know, players can coach up these young guys thing. But it's, I mean, it's true. Like, maybe we could get another veteran corner in free agency to help AJ Terrell a little bit uh, if uh, Casey Hayward can't stay. But, um, but I also admit, corner is a bigger need than I thought it was. Um, but it, it, it really just depends on if Casey Hayward can't stay healthy or let alone if he even stays on this team. Um, now, pass rush to me is still what I would get in the first round. Wide receiver, I, you said wide receiver in the second round? Yeah, you did. I would definitely get wide receiver in the second round, honestly, regardless, but pass rush is what I would go for in the first round. But corner, like, you know, sure, we didn't need a corner. But I would try and go corner a little later in the draft or in free agency. Um, or just, I guess, just have our fingers crossed that Casey Hayward can come back healthy. Um, but I don't know. Uh, getting a corner in the first round, you know, cool. If it happens, cool. If not, I just hope we go with pass rush. And now for the last video, the one that was released yesterday. Gray Malayman? I hope I pronounced that right. I'm sorry. Uh, who are some good later round talents we can hope to get for next season? Um, later round talents. So I, again, I haven't really gotten to like who my favorite players are yet. Um, so I unfortunately don't think I can answer that question. I'm really sorry. Um, that will probably have to be later this year, like come like mid March or so or April. 
um, when the draft is like getting a little closer. Cause I, I just, I haven't really actually gotten like to study all of these guys. Yeah. Except for like the big names, of course. But, um, but unfortunately I, I can't really answer that question right now. And I'm really, really sorry, but, um, I hope I can come back to this and answer this question with, you know, some honest thoughts on the great later on talent. And then the last question is from Mark Jones, 8817. What does success look like in 2023? Um, so that is a really cool question. And I'm like trying to think of like, so like, I do think that making playoffs is the number one goal, like regardless. Cause I mean, like, come on, it's like literally year three of Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot. Okay, they got their feet wet in the NFL. And now it's kind of time to like, you know, pick things up. Um, and we have talent. The talent is there. Tyler Algier, Drake London, like there's talent. Obviously we have to get more, which also is a part of a successful 2023. We don't have to like go all in and spend like so much money and get all these players in free agency, but just, I would like to see two or three big name players. Yes, really, I'm that demanding, but I would. I mean, like this team just needs help. I would like to see two or three big name players in free agency. And then of course, a great, a great draft. Um, so I guess overall, my quick answer would be uh, draft well, obviously. Um, get two or three big name players, not even just to, again, coach these players, but also to impact the team in some way so we can start winning games. Um, develop Desmond Ritter, see where he goes, and then make playoffs. Would probably be, because I don't, you know, you don't have to win the playoffs in 2023 slash 24, because this team is just a little too young, but, um, but I don't know. I, I think that would make for a successful 2023. Um, but it was fun to bring these back, and I look forward to the next set of questions that you guys have for me. Remember, I will ask for mailbag questions on my community tab every Thursday. And whatever questions you have for me, I hope I can answer them in the best way possible. And I also hope that I answered your guys' questions thoroughly and honestly and positively in this video. Uh, let me know how this video went. And uh, I'll see you guys on Tuesday with a video at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Rise up.